The sun was just starting to rise over the large bustling city of Abuja. The sky turned a soft pink as the students of Crestwood Academy, a prestigious boarding school, slowly made their way to the morning assembly. Crestwood was known for its luxurious facilities and the wealth of its students. Girls in expensive uniform chatted about the latest fashion trend and social media gossip. The academy was the ultimate dream for many, but for Tomiwa, it was a new beginning. Tomiwa had just arrived at Crestwood. Her heart raced as she stepped out of the car with her small box, the last remnants of her old life. Her uniform felt stiff and unfamiliar against her skin. She was one of the few on a scholarship program, and while she was excited, she felt a knot of anxiety in her stomach. She had heard about how the girls here could be. As Tomiwa walked toward the assembly hall, she could feel the stares from some of the other girls. They whispered and giggled behind their hands, their voice carrying over the soft tones of the morning. Tomiwa tried to ignore them, but it was hard not to feel like an outsider. Inside the assembly hall, the students settled into their seats. Tomiwa found an empty spot near the back. She tried to blend in, but it wasn't long before a tall girl with a perfect ponytail and a nose in the air walked over. Her name was Shoma, and she was one of the most popular girls in Crestwood Academy. You must be the new girl, Shoma said in a voice dripping with sarcasm. What is your name? Tomiwa, she replied, trying to keep her voice steady. Nice to meet you, Chama said with a fake smile. You must know that we have certain expectations here. Don't get in my way or else. After Chama said that, she turned and left while her friends followed her. Tomiwa felt a flush of embarrassment. She hadn't expected such a good reception. The assembly began and the headmistress gave a long speech about the importance of discipline and respect. Tomiwa tried to focus, but she kept glancing around, feeling the weight of other girls staring at her. As the assembly ended, Tomiwa made her way to her first class. Her heart was pounding. Her classroom was just as beautiful as the rest of the school, with polished wooden decks, high ceiling and a large window that let in the morning light. Tomiwa took a seat near the window and looked around. The girls in the class were chatting and laughing. They seemed to have their own little world, and Tomiwa felt like she was peering in from the outside. During the break, she tried to start a conversation with a girl sitting next to her, but the girl barely looked up from her phone. Tomiwa felt her cheek flushed again. She began to understand that fitting in here would not be easy. Later that day, Tomiwa went to the dining hall for lunch. The room was filled with laughter and whispers from the girls. She felt a bit lost among the seas of the girls in their neat uniform. She tried to find a place to sit, but each time she approached a table, the girls there seemed to shuffle around or give her unfriendly looks. Finally, she found a spot at a table in the corner, away from the others. As she sat down, she heard the laughter of Chioma and her friends from across the room. Chioma looked in Tomiwa's direction and smirked. Tomiwa tried to ignore it, but it was difficult not to feel self-conscious. As the day went by, things didn't get much better. Tomiwa often felt like she was invisible or worse or a target. The other girls rarely spoke to her, unless it was to make a side comment about her or to bully her. She noticed that Chioma and her friends seemed to enjoy making her feel uncomfortable. It was as if they took pleasure in seeing her struggle. One afternoon, as Tomiwa walked through the corridors of her school, she overheard the conversation between Chioma and a group of friends. This stupid scholarship girl thought she could just walk around the year like she belonged here. A Dunavi scholarship girl that our parents are funding her fees. Choma said, her voice dripping with disdain. Tomiwa's heart sank. 
It was clear they had no intention of accepting her. She was determined to stay strong. Her scholarship meant a lot for her, and she wasn't going to let a few mean girls ruin it for her. Despite the difficulties, Tomiwa was determined to make the best of her situation. She focused on her studies and tried to stay out of trouble. She hoped that eventually things might get better. But then, something unexpected happened. One of the girls, Kemi, who had been silent until now, approached Tomiwa. Hello, Kemi said. I see how they are treating you. It is not nice. If you need someone to talk to, I am here. Tomiwa was surprised but grateful. She smiled at Demi, feeling a glimmer of hope. Maybe, just maybe, she wouldn't have to face everything alone. The day at Crestwood Academy seemed to blend together for Tomiwa. Each day brought the same mix of tension and isolation. The whispers and snickering from Choma and her friends never stopped, and Tomiwa learned to keep her head down and focus on her study. She found comfort in the library, a quiet place where she could escape from the clique and gossips. One afternoon, Tomiwa sat at her usual spot in the library, surrounded by piles of books. The librarian, Mrs. Adeyemi, gave her a warm smile as she walked by. Tomiwa was deeply engrossed in her textbook when she overheard a soft voice. May I join you if you don't mind? Tomiwa looked up to see Kemi, the girl who had spoken to her earlier, standing next to her. Kemi had a friendly smile and seemed genuinely interested. Sure, Tomiwa said, trying to hide her surprise. Kemi took a seat at the table and pulled out her own book. For a while, the two girls studied in silence. The quiet companionship was a pleasant change for Tomiwa. As the days passed, Kemi and Tomiwa began to spend more time together. They shared their classes and found themselves chatting during breaks. Kemi was kind and had a great sense of humor. She made Tomiwa laugh, which felt like a small victory in the mix of ongoing tension with the other girls. One day, while the two were sitting under a large tree in the school courtyard, Kemi turned to Tomiwa with a serious look. Tomiwa, have you heard what happened last week? Kemi asked. Tomiwa shook her head, curious. No, tell me, what happened? Kemi looked around to make sure no one was listening before she spoke. A girl from another school came here to visit. She was slapped by some of Chioma's friends just because she talked to a boy they like. Tomiwa's eyes widened. Really? That is very bad. Yes, so Kemi said, nodding. Choma and her friends think they can get away with anything. It is like they have their own little world where they make the rules. Tomiwa felt a chill. She had already experienced how Choma and her friends could be, and the thought of them resorting to violence was frightening. She hoped that Kemi was right about having a way to stand up to them. Over the next few days, Kemi and Tomiwa grew closer. They helped each other with schoolwork and supported each other through the rough patches. Kemi shared stories about her life and the other girls at Crestwood Academy, and Tomiwa felt like she finally had a friend she could trust. But Choma and her friends were not going to let Tomiwa's new friendship go unnoticed. One day, Tomiwa and Kemi were chatting in the school courtyard. When Chioma and her clique appeared, they stood over with their usual air of superiority. Well, look who we have here, Chioma said, her voice dripping with mock of sweetness. The scholarship girl and her new little sidekick. Kemi face tightened, but she kept her cool. And she said, what is the color of your problem, Chioma? We are just enjoying our break. Is there something you need? Chama's eyes narrowed, just making sure you know your place in this school. You are just a girl on a scholarship, remember. Don't get too comfortable. With that, Chama and her friends walked away, leaving Tomiwa and Kemi in heavy silence. Tomiwa's heart pounded. She knew Chama was trying to intimidate them, but she refused to let it show. Don't let them get to you, Kemi said, placing a comforting hand on Tomiwa's shoulder. We will get through this together. Tomiwa nodded, feeling a surge of gratitude. She was determined to stay strong, not just for herself, but for her new friend as well. 
As the weeks went by, Tomiwa and Kemi faced the ongoing challenges of life at Crestwood. They continued to support each other and Tomiwa found that having a friend made the tough times a little easier to handle. The bullying from Chioma and her friends didn't stop, but Tomiwa was learning how to handle it better. One evening, as Tomiwa and Kemi were walking back to the hostel after dinner, they saw a group of girls gathered around the windows. They whispered with excitement. Kemi talked on Tomiwa's arm. Let's go check it out, Kemi suggested, her voice full of curiosity. The two girls approached the window and peered inside. To their surprise, they saw Chioma and her friends laughing and talking. The room was filled with a sense of drama and Tomiwa felt a shiver run down her spine. What do you think they are planning? Tomiwa asked, her voice trembling slightly. Kemi looked worried. Whatever it is, it can't be good. We need to be careful. Tomiwa agreed. The tension at Crestwood seemed to be growing and she had a feeling that things were about to get more complicated. She hoped that, with Kemi's help, she could navigate the challenges ahead and find a way to stand up to Chioma and her friends. As the weeks went by, the atmosphere at Crestwood grew more tense. Tomiwa and Kemi tried their best to stay out of trouble, but Choma and her friends seemed determined to make their lives more difficult. The whispers and stares were constant, and Tomiwa felt like she was always on edge. One Friday, during lunch break, Tomiwa and Kemi were sitting in the dining hall, enjoying their meals. Tomiwa was trying to focus on her food, when she noticed Choma and her clique entering the hall, laughing and chatting loudly, they walked past Tomiwa and Kemi, making sure everyone could hear their conversation. I heard they are planning something big, Choma said loudly, casting a sideway glass at Tomiwa and Kemi, something that will show everyone who is in charge around there. Tomiwa felt a knot in her stomach. She knew Choma's word was aimed at her and Kemi, but she tried to ignore them. Kemi squeezed Tomiwa's hand under the table, offering silent support. After the lunch, as Tomiwa and Kemi headed back to their hostel, they saw Chioma and her friends gathering near the school's main gates. They were chatting and pointing toward the entrance, where a group of new students had just arrived. Hmm. It looked like they are up to something, Kemi said, her voice filled with concern. We need to keep an eye on them. Tomiwa nodded. The thoughts of Chioma and her friends causing trouble for the new students make her unease. She and Kemi decided to stay by and watch what was happening. As they watched, they saw Chioma and her friends approach the new students with fake smile and exaggerated politeness. Tomiwa felt a pang of sympathy for the newcomers who looked confused and overwhelmed. What is going on here? One of the new students asked, trying to keep a brave face. Oh. We are just welcoming you, Chioma said with a sweet smile, but don't get too comfortable. This is our school and we like to make sure everyone knows their place. Tomiwa and Kemi exchanged worried glances. They could see the fear in the new students' eyes and it made them both feel uncomfortable. Later that night, Tomiwa and Kemi were in their hostel room discussing the day's events. I can't believe how mean they were, Tomiwa said, shaking her head. It is like they get a kick out of making everyone else feel bad. Kemi sighed. It is not right to, but we have to be careful. We don't want to give them any more reason to target us. Just then, there was a knock on the door. Tomiwa opened the door to find one of the new students standing there, looking nervous. Hi, I am Ada, the new student said quietly. I saw you guys watching earlier. I just wanted to say thank you for standing up to Chioma and her friends. It means a lot. Tomiwa and Kemi welcomed Ada inside, and the three girls spent the evening talking and sharing their experiences. Ada explained that she was also on a scholarship, and she had been struggling to fit in with the other students. As the days went by, Tomiwa and Kemi and Ada formed a close friendship. They supported each other through the ups and downs of the school life and found peace in their shared experiences. The bond between them grew stronger and they felt like a small supportive team against the bullying from Chioma and her clique. One day, during a school assembly, 
The principal made an announcement about a new student council being formed. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada listened with interest as the principal explained the roles and responsibilities of the student council members. Maybe this is our chance, Ada said, her eyes lightened up. If we can get involved, we might be able to make a difference. Tomiwa and Kemi agreed. They decided to run for student council positions, hoping to create positive changes at Crestwood Academy and stand up to the bullying. As the student council's election approached, Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada worked hard to prepare their campaign. They created posters and flyers and they talked to other students about their plans and ideas. But Choma and her friends were not happy about the competition. They made their displeasure known, spreading rumors and trying to undermine Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada's efforts. Despite the challenges, Tomiwa and her friends remained determined. They knew that their fight was not just about winning the election, but also standing up for what was right and making Crestwood a better place for everyone. The day of the Students' Council election finally arrived. The atmosphere at Crestwood was bustling with excitement. Students chatted eagerly about the candidates and posters covered the walls of the school. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada were nervous but hopeful as they prepared for the big day. In the morning assembly, each candidate had a chance to speak to the student's body. Tomiwa took a deep breath and walked up to the microphone. Her heart was pounding as she looked up to the seas of faces in the crowd. Good morning, everyone. Tomiwa began, her voice steady. My name is Tomiwa Abalogo, and I am running for the student council. I know that many of us have faced challenges here at Crestwood, and I want to help make things better for everyone. If elected, I promise to listen to your concern and work to create a better supportive environment. The crowd clapped politely as Tomiwa stepped down from the stage. Kemi and Ada gave her encouraging smile, and Tomiwa felt a bit more confident. Next, it was Kemi's turn to speak. She spoke about her passion for improving school spirits and organizing events that would bring students together. Ada spoke last, sharing her own experience and her desire to make Crestwood a place where everyone felt welcomed. Her words were heartfelt and many students in the audience nodded in agreement. Chama and her friends also gave speeches, but their words were more about maintaining the status and keeping things as they should be. They spoke in a way that reminded everyone of their previous behavior and many students began to question their intentions. After the speech, students cast their votes and the waiting began. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada gathered in the library, talking nervously as they wait for the results. They tried to stay positive, but the stress of the day was getting to them. Finally, the announcement was made. The principal walked to the front of the assembly hall, holding the list of the winning candidates. Tomiwa's heart raced as she listened, and the winners of the student council election are the principal started. The room filled silent and Tomiwa held her breath. The winners are Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada, the principal announced. Everybody in the hall was excited. Students clapped and cheered for the new student council. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada hugged each other, tears of relief and joy in their eyes. They had won. The celebration was short-lived as Shona and her friends were visibly upset. They glared at Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada, clearly not pleased with the outcome. She looked at them and she said, We will see about this. It is not yet over. Choma muttered, her voice dripping with venom. This isn't over. Trust me, I will deal with you guys. Well, the new student council members knew they had a lot of work ahead of them. They were excited to start their new rules, but they also knew that they had to be careful. Shoma and her friends were not likely to take their defeats well. The next few days, we are busy as Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada settled into their new roles. They attended meetings, planned events and worked hard to address students' concerns. They quickly learned that being on a student council was not just about making speech. It was also about the real action and facing challenges head-on. One evening, as Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada were working on a project, they heard a commotion outside. Curious, 
they went to investigate and found a group of students gathered around Chioma and her friends. The girls were arguing loudly and it was clear that Chioma was not pleased with the way things had turned out. You think you can just walk in and change everything? Chioma shouted. We have been running this school for years and now you think you can just take over? Scholarship children. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada approached the group. Determined to stay calm, Tomiwa stepped forward and spoke. We are not trying to take over, she said firmly. We just want to make Crestwood a better place for everyone. We want to work together, not against each other. Shoma's face was filled with anger, but she didn't say anything more. She turned and stormed off, her friends following closely behind. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada signed, which relieved. It was clear that the road ahead would be challenging, but they were ready to face it together. They knew that standing up to Chioma and her friends was just the beginning. They had to prove themselves and show everyone that change was possible. As the weeks went by, Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada continued to work hard. They organized events, listened to students' concerns, and tried to make Crestwood a more inclusive and supportive place. Slowly, they began to see positive changes. More students started to feel comfortable speaking up, and the atmosphere in the school began to improve. Choma and her friends continued to cause trouble from time to time, but their influence was fading away. The support for Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada grew stronger, and more students joined in their efforts to make Crestwood a better place. As months passed, Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada found their footing at the new student council members at Crestwood. They worked hard to implement their ideas and address students' concerns. They planned events, held meetings, and tried to make life at the school better for everyone. Despite their efforts, Choma and her friends remained a thorn in their sight. They continued to spread rumors and trying to undermine the new student council. They would make bad comments in the hallway and attempt to sabotage events. But Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada were determined not to let them get in the way. One day, as they were preparing for an annual Crestwood talent show, Tomiwa received an anonymous note in her locker. The note read, You think you have won. Just wait and see. Your problems are only beginning. Tomiwa felt a chill run down her spine. She showed the note to Kemi and Ada. They shared her concern. They knew that Chema and her friends were behind the note, but they weren't sure what to expect next. The talent show was a big event at Crestwood, and it was meant to showcase the students' talents and bring the school community together. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada have worked hard to organize the event, and they hope it would be a success. As the night of the talent show approached, the excitement in the school was palpable. Students were rehearsing their performance, and the hallway were filled with sounds of music and laughter. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada were busy making final preparation and ensuring everything was in place. On the night of the show, the school hall was packed with students, teachers and parents. The lights dimmed and the stage was set for an evening of entertainment. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada took their seats among the audience, ready to enjoy the show they had worked so hard to put together. The performers were fantastic and the crowd cheered and clapped for each act. But as the show went on, Tomiwa noticed something strange. A group of students in the back of the hall were whispering and giggling. She saw Chioma among them. Suddenly, in the middle of a performance, the lights went out, the hall was plugged into darkness, and there was a gaps from the audience. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada scrambled to find out what had happened. They could hear murmurs of confusion and concern from the crowd. When the lights came on, Tomiwa saw the stage had been vandalized, the decoration were torn down, and some of the performance props were ruined. The audience was in shock and there was uncomfortable silence. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada quickly got to work. They organized volunteers to clean up the mess and repair the damage. They reassured the performance and made sure the show could continue. Despite the setback, they were determined not to let Chioma's action ruin the events. The rest of the talent show went smoothly, and the audience was impressed by the resilience of the students' council. Tomiwa, Kemi, and Ada were proud of how they handled the situation. They knew that the vandalizing was a deliberate attempt to undermine their efforts, but they refused to let it get to them. After the show, 
Tumiwa, Kemi and Ada were exhausted but satisfied. They had faced another challenge and came out stronger. They knew that Choma and her friends would not give up easily, but they were ready to keep fighting for what they believed in. The next day, the students of Crestwood Academy gossiped about the talent show. Many students praised Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada for their hard work and determination. Incidents that happened that night had only strengthened their resolve to making Crestwood a better place. Choma and her friends continued to cause trouble, but their action became less effective as more students support Domiwa and her friends. The new student council members worked hard to improve the school environment and their efforts were beginning to pay off. But then, something unexpected happened. A rumor started circulating that Tomiwa and Ada were in a romantic relationship. That is, they were lesbian and sleeping with each other. The rumor spread quickly, fueled by Choma and her friends. The gossip was relentless and it began to affect the student council's work. Students whispered behind their back and even some teachers seemed to be influenced by the rumors. The three friends were haunted and confused by the false accusation. They had to find a way to address the situation without letting it drain their progress. One afternoon, as they were working on a new project, Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada discussed the rumor. This has to be Chama's doing so, Kemi said frustration evidence in her voice. We need to find a way to put an end to this. I agree, Ada said, but how do we stop the rumors? They are everywhere. Tomiwa thought for a moment and then spoke. We need to address this matter. Like, we need to address it openly. We can't let the gossips take over our lives. Let's hold a meeting with the students and clear the air. The three friends agreed and it was the best course of action. They scheduled a meeting in the school hall and prepared a statement to address the rumors. They wanted to make it clear that the accusations were false and that their focus was on improving the school. On the day of the meeting, the school hall was filled with students. Tobiwa, Kemi and Ada stood at the front, facing their peers. Tobiwa took a deep breath and began to speak. Good evening, my fellow students. We have heard the rumors that have been spreading about us, Tomiwa said. We want to address this issue openly. There is no truth to this rumor. Kemi, Ada and I are just friends and colleagues, and we are dedicated to making Crestwood a better place. After Ada spoke, Kemi continued, It is important for us to focus on our work and not let false accusations distract us. We are committed to our rules in the student council and we hope to work together with all of you to make our school a positive environment. Ada added, we appreciate the support we have received from many of you. Let's put aside the gossip and work together to build a better school. The room was quiet as the students listened. Slowly, the whispers and rumors began to die down. Many students were reassured by Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada's open and honest approach. In the following days, the rumor began to fade away. The student's body will focus on their work and the positive changes that the student's council was bringing to Crestwood Academy. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada felt a renewed sense of determination. The final exam approached and the pressure was on. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada balanced their study with their responsibilities on the student's council. They knew that their work was important, but they also needed to do well in their classes. The end of the school year was filled with both excitement and anxiety. The students were eager to finish their exam and enjoy the summer break. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada were proud of what they had accomplished and hopeful for the future. On the last day of school, there was a special assembly to celebrate the achievements of the year. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada were recognized for their hard work and dedication. The principal praised them for their leadership and commitment to making Crestwood a better place. As they stood on the stage receiving their certificates and applause, Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada felt a sense of accomplishment. They had faced many challenges, including the false accusation, but they had overcome them together. They had made a positive impact in their school and shows that change was possible. As the school year came to an end, Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada looked forward to the future with hope and excitement. They knew that there would be more challenges ahead, but they were ready to face them all. 
they had proven to themselves and to others that they could make a difference. The journey has been difficult, but it also had been rewarding. Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada we are grateful for the support they had received from their friends and classmates. They were proud of what they had achieved and excited for what the future held. With the school year behind them, they took a moment to reflect on their journey. They had grown stronger and more confident through their experiences. They knew that they had made a lasting impact on Crestwood Academy and that their work had made a difference. As they prepared for the summer break, Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada felt a sense of satisfaction. They have faced their fear, stood up for what was right and made their school a better place. They knew that their friendship and their commitments to making a difference would continue to guide them in the future. And so, with the promise of new adventure ahead, Tomiwa, Kemi and Ada looked forward to the next chapter of their lives. They had proved that no matter how difficult the challenges may be, they could overcome them with determination, hard work, and the support of good friends. The moral lesson of this story is, empathy and respect overcome adversity. The story emphasized that treating others with kindness and respect is crucial. Discrimination and bully only lead to harm and conflict, while empathy and understanding can bridge differences and heal wounds. It highlights that everyone deserves to be treated fairly, regardless of their background or social status, and that facing challenge with courage and integrity can lead to a positive change and personal growth. Please, if you like our story, do not forget to subscribe, hit the like button, drop a comment, and share this story to your family and loved ones. Till next time, bye.